If a Vulcan Commodore can get away with wearing them, I'm sure I can. Although I can't really see anything, so I'm going to take them off anyway. Hello, welcome to my channel where I talk about all the geeky pop culture things I enjoy. And I am doing weekly reviews of Star Trek Picard at the moment. I do have to apologise, this is a, probably about a day later than I usually do them. See, I usually record my Star Trek Picard reviews on a Thursday evening and get out first thing Friday morning. Uh, but Thursday evening this week I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, I've gone full geek. I'm playing D&D. &D. So that's why this one's a little bit later. Right, Picard, episode three. The end is the beginning. Uh, I'm going to give my general thoughts of the episode without any spoilers. So spoiler free section first, and then I'll move on to some more detailed things and, and talk about a sec. It'll be a section where I might say stuff that is spoilers. So, but non-spoilers first. This was a step up from last week, I think, which was well, it, ha it was a bit of a slower paced episode last week. It kind of felt like it was, it had a lot of setup to do last week. And I think the episode overall suffered from it, but it also kind of needed that setup. So I understand why we had that episode, but it wasn't the most thrilling or exciting episode. We didn't get anything really great out of that episode, either from a sort of, I'm not just talking sort of action. Uh, I, I said in my review, we didn't get any action. Of course, as somebody pointed out in my comment section we got a little bit of action right at the top of last week with the attack on mars and the flashback to that but we didn't get any action throughout the rest of it um but we also didn't get that much good slower character stuff there weren't really any great dynamics last week so it kind of slowed it down whereas this week they've still they're still doing a lot of setup but i think they do it in a much more interesting way we get introduced to quite a lot of new characters in this but the dynamics we see between Picard and those characters is so much more interesting than anything we got last week, apart from his last week, we got the his in, his interaction with the Admiral that he had the explosive sort of confrontation with. That was really good last week, but that was kind of it last week. Whereas this week, we've got quite a lot of setup for a lot of different characters that we get introduced to this week for the first time, at least properly. And we get a lot of nice little moments between them. We get a lot of nice dynamics established between Picard and them, sometimes between each them between each other. Uh, and we get all the information we need. There's still a lot of setup, but they do it in a much more smoother way and a much more interesting way It that keeps us hooked at the same time. Plus there's action uh, that Picard gets involved in and it's sort of in the midway point of the episode. So it kind of breaks it up really nicely as well. So. Overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with this episode. I had a good time watching it. The characters got developed. It was uh, probably, I would say, the best of the three episodes we've had so far. Without going into specific spoilers yet, uh, we also got some more elements of the evolving mystery and the evolving plot arcs. And we got some sort of semi-answers, but we also got more questions from those answers, which is a great way, as long as they've got an end game in goal, unlike something like Lost, for instance, but as long as they've got, they know where they're going, that's a really interesting way to keep us hooked without thinking, oh, come on, just reveal stuff all the time and not giving us anything. They're giving us little tidbits. We're finding out more information. The stuff on the board cube was, was interesting as well. Um, yeah, it was a good episode and it solidly sets up the sort of next stage of the series, I think, because the this kind of first three episodes really feel like setup some of it good some of it not so good like last week or slower paced at least now it feels like okay the mission can start and that is quite exciting so that's my general thoughts out of the way let's get into specifics now uh, this is the spoiler section so if you haven't watched the episode and you don't want to be spoiled go watch it then come back so we start the episode with another quick flashback to events we saw last week in the uh, attack on Mars, which confused me slightly because I I don't know why we were shown it again. I guess to sort of establish that they were 14 years ago. Um, but it was basically stuff we'd seen last week. And it wasn't, you know, we'd already had the previously on Star Trek Picard bit. It was it seemed a funny way to start that. I kind of felt like it should have just gone straight into the... 14 years ago, him and Raffi, um, Picard coming out of his meeting with 
the top brass of Starfleet and and just go straight into that scene because that was a good scene and that would have been a strong start to the episode I don't think it needed that that random sort of flashes of, of what happened on Mars again. In terms of what's in that scene, I thought we got quite a nice lot of stuff. We got properly introduced to Raffi for the first time. That was, uh, got, a, got a sort of hint at their dynamic, um, which I'll talk about, uh, contrasted with their dynamic later on. It's very interesting because they their dynamic here, and I think it was very important that they set it up, establishes them as quite close. She refers to him as JR, which I'm miffy about. I, it kind of feels a little bit like I can't imagine Picard standing for that from a subordinate, even when he's very close with, but I'm willing to let it pass because their their overall dynamic is really interesting there and it seems really close. And later on, where we when we see her in their other scenes, when, you know, up to the current point in the timeline, their dynamic is very different and that contrast is very interesting to to sort of recognize how their relationship has deteriorated from this point. Very briefly, I like the uniforms. I actually like the uniforms more than the current era uniforms that we're on in the four, the 14 years after this period. I I really like these uniforms. The kind of down the side bits, they're nice. I I like them. It's a shame they didn't stick more with that. I don't know why Starfleet insists on changing its uniform so much. I mean, come on guys, keep a uniform for at least 50 years. Or so. You don't need to change it all the time unless you've got a, a practical reason to do so. Why change it every five years or so? Which seems to be what they do. I don't know why. I did see a theory once that suggested it's so that anybody time traveling can easily identify which era they're in. I wonder if Starfleet put that much thought into it. It's an interesting theory. <laughs> in terms of Picard's resignation, I I'm glad that they dealt with that. I'm glad we didn't actually get to see it either. I like the way that they've kind of half revealed it. We he, we see him in the aftermath of his resignation. And I don't know about you, I kind of got the feeling that he had played his hand there as a gamble, uh, put on the, I'm going to resign if you don't do this, thinking that they probably would do it because they wouldn't want to lose him. And this kind of goes back to the Admiral last week when, you know, she goes, you've got sheer fucking hubris. This is, this is his, uh, he kind of has this arrogance and partly it's rightly deserved, but also it's, it's an interesting character trait that he kind of assumed that they would back down because he would threaten to quit and that they would give way. And again, we saw that in last week's um, episode as well. It's it's an interesting character trait. I'm, I'm wondering if they'll do more with it, if they'll develop that, or if the he'll start to tread back from that and, and sort of realise, you know, one man, he's only one man, and uh, the, the sort of... Uh, might get taken down a peg. I don't know, I don't know really. I just, it's an interesting thread that I think might go somewhere. But effectively, I don't think he went in with the plan to do that. I think it was in the moment, he just decided to take a gamble and the gamble didn't pay off. In the interview we got last, uh, in episode one, it kind of felt a bit more like he put took a, a planned stand to resign and make it a big public dec like he publicly declared he was resigning and that kind of kind of had that kind of feel to it to make a statement but we get that this bit new bit of information here that shows us that it wasn't quite like that um and i quite like it as i said we get a lot of new introductions to new characters we've had raffi here in the 14 years past but then we get her in the current era and she's a very seems a very different person she's uh, you know gone through a lot and the contrast between her in the modern modern 14 years later day and the 14 years in the past period is really good there's good contrast there i wasn't sure about the vaping but then clearly they're playing into she has some kind of addiction that i think they called it was it snug leaf or something I, I can't remember exactly what they called it now but she's obviously addicted to this thing that can give her hallucinations it seems or paranoia I think she refers to paranoia so it's kind of like a, a weed equivalent I guess uh, of the future that's you know might play into future things it's an interesting thread to uh, to go down and what I liked about their dynamic in this bit is that you don't necessarily side with either of them because they've both got very valid points and you can absolutely understand 
from a, a sort of emotional human level how she feels about Picard and why she feels that way. As far as she's concerned, he backed down when he should have stood firm and he just sort of left. And there's this whole sort of annoyance that he left to go have a nice life on a vineyard, whereas she had to is living in this pokey little trailer in the out like outback. I don't know where it is, the desert somewhere. And she hasn't had a good life since then. Whereas he has had, you know, been able to release books and make wine and just generally live quite a privileged life. And she hasn't had that. It's a, it's an interesting character dynamic, and it's, it'll be interesting to explore further how that change, how that has changed their relationship since they were serving together. We also get the reintroduction of Hugh, the Borg that we saw in several episodes of Star Trek: The Next Generation, who disconnected from the collective but carried on being a Borg. Now he seems to be more deborgified, and he is seemingly running the reclamation project at the Borg Cube for the Romulans. So I'm really interested in where, where they go with that. He feels very much like an evolution of the character we saw in TNG. Uh, he kind of felt a bit like a a small child in, in that to begin with because he was fresh out of the collective and a bit sort of wide-eyed wondered at the world. And it feels like the point he's at and we see him now you can imagine that trajectory that would have got him there it uh, i'm very pleased to see him and uh, interested to see where it goes i'm hoping we get to see seven of nine soon i mentioned the action and there's a brilliant action scene where the chateau gets attacked by the uh what they called um not the tell the tell the, the the people that's even more secret than the tell i've forgotten their name the romulans and it's such a good action sequence and i love the fact that it played into the characteristics of the two Romulans he's got living with him because they are ex Tau Shiar agents and this is where their training kicks into gear they've got guns hidden at strategic places and weapons hidden in strategic places it was brilliantly chore choreographed and even Picard gets in on the action but not in a really unrealistic way uh, it's good that they're involving Picard but he's an older man now and how they involve him means that he's you know manages to get a hold of a gun manages to kill a few manages to use his walking stick to to tr to knock one at one point but it all kind of feels quite natural for someone his age it doesn't feel like he's suddenly a superhero and able to do stuff that his body really shouldn't be able to do so it was a great action scene and perfectly placed within the episode because it was i think about halfway through and it it We'd had a lot of very good character stuff up until that point, and then it sort of ramped up with the action then, and then we got back to more great character stuff. So brilliantly well placed and really enjoyed that. We got Captain Rio as this sort of rough and ready uh, ship captain who's kind of a bit of a uh, vagabond, a bit of a you know rough around the edges kind of guy. But we got some nice stuff about his history and the fact that he was an ex Starfleet officer and he's kind of his ship is kept very neat and to regulate Starfleet regulations still so he's still and Picard notices that and there's a great sort of interaction where Picard sees in him you know a true Starfleet officer uh, as Picard sees it and the it's I think we're going to get some good stuff from him and he's a very interesting character and clearly a good actor as well because not only does he play the captain he also plays the EMH on the ship as well and I think that says something about the character of the captain, that he has programmed his EMH to look like him. There's some kind of psychological analysis you could do on that, uh, which I'm sure is going to play into future episodes and make him a very interesting character. But it also proves that he's a very good actor because they're two very different characters that he's playing there. And they... Uh, and, or is it three? I, I, was, I was confused slightly, and maybe this is my fault for not paying enough attention... Or maybe it's the episode's fault for not making it clear enough. I'm not sure. Uh, whether or not there was one emergency hologram that does multiple things. Or if there's multiple emergency holograms for different tasks. Because he calls one in a medical one. But then later on he's got one fixing some systems. So is that an emergency uh, like technician hologram or something? I'm not sure. But either way, that it's interesting. And uh, we, I think it has the potential to play into how much artificial life is 
sentient in the same way that we had we've explored with data in tng and with the doctor in voyager and and that seems to be a theme with this as well so that will be interesting to explore going forward as well i think um and yeah it's, uh, i'm we don't have the full crew yet but looking it's looking good on that ship talking of crew on that ship we also get the doctor joining now she turns up during the attack on uh the chateau and sort of fire kills one of the guards she's sort of uh, one of the agents the romulan agents and previously to that we'd seen a scene where uh oh the commodore commodore O had turned up to her and asked her about Picard's visit and we hadn't seen the conversation they'd had after that so she turns up uh just after the attack had happened now I don't know if anybody else has this suspicion but my current theory is that she is a plant by O. O has convinced her to spy for her or blackmailed her more probably to spy for O on the ship she wants her on Picard's mission to report back and the best way to do that is to set up the attack um, plan for it to fail and have her show up at the min last minute maybe kill the last one earn their trust a bit more even though Picard already trusts her and then you know ask to join the crew and that's exactly what she does she asks to join the crew Picard says yes she's on board she's on the mission I think she's going to be a bit of a double agent a bit of a spy spying on Picard reporting back to O here don't know if anybody else agrees with me there, but let me know in the comments below if you do. We had a lovely moment at the end where Picard goes engage and shoots off and we get the TNG theme music -y bit. And that was lovely. That was a nice little nostalgic end to the episode. And we're off. We're off into space. So what's the adventure kind of feels like it's now really started. We've had a lot of really good character stuff, which I do hope we continue to get. And then we're off into space. Um, so that's, yeah, exciting. I haven't really talked much about the stuff on the ball cube. Um, we had, obviously, apart from Hugh, we uh, we had some more mystery revealed or more questions posed about who uh, Doctor... I keep forgetting her name. By the end of this show, I'll remember her name. Darja's... I'm just going to keep calling her Darja's sister. Darja's sister. Uh, she has knowledge that she doesn't know how she got, because she's some kind of android, um, but she doesn't know how she got it. And she there's these Romulans that when they were infected or assimilated when they were assimilated by the Borg it did something that shut down the Borg and there was some line about them being the only Romulans ever assimilated so something about Romulans disagrees with the Borg systems what it is I don't know um be interesting maybe we're going to find out that the whole Romulan race is synthetic and that's why they're incompatible with the Borg maybe another random theory I don't know but there was a lot of you know delving into the mysteries and stuff there by itself it was great to see Hugh again that there wasn't that much other great stuff on on there we got a bit more answers and a bit more questions but there wasn't really anything massively to write home about on the Borg stuff this week and that's what I thought of the end of the beginning. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. And I will be back next week to review episode four. Uh, by the way, I'm also reviewing Doctor Who every week. So if you enjoy that, then please do check out my Doctor Who reviews as well. I will see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.